and I will uh, host a webinar today uh, for the Greenhouse Gas Analyzer. If there are any questions, uh, you can ask them uh, via the chat. Uh, I have uh, another uh, colleague, Ashley Meller. Um, she will be uh, moderating um, and we can try to answer the questions uh, either during the webinar or uh, when I'm finished. Uh, and if there are any questions uh, which I'm not able to give an answer straight away, uh, we will note them down and then um, give an answer afterwards via the email. So I will start uh, to share my uh, screen. I'm Evelina, uh, also joining. I uh, wasn't sure if that is uh, John McKenzie. He's the product manager of software. So I have two colleagues with me. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, and we'll, uh, I will tell you today something about the, the greenhouse uh, gas analyzer we offer. Uh, we have an application note, so I'll go, we'll go through that and um, show what possibilities we have uh, for the analysis of the greenhouse gases. So if we look at the um, uh, greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect that we have, uh, what is it exactly? So the, the greenhouse effect, you have the sun, uh, which is reflecting on the earth, and there's some uh, solar radiation uh, uh, reflected back into the atmosphere. Uh, but because of the, the greenhouse gases, uh, the methane, the carbon dioxide, and the nitrous oxide, uh, some of that uh, radiation is reflected back on Earth, and that's warming up the Earth. So the greenhouse gases uh, are the gases that uh, absorbs and emits the radiant energy, uh, causing the greenhouse effect. And the carbon dioxide, the methane, and the nitrous oxide uh, are coming from different sources. So, for example, the carbon dioxide is from the burning of the uh, fossil fuels, and methane is coming from the agricultural sources, uh, for example, uh, the cows, uh, and the nitrous oxide from the natural and the agricultural soils. Uh, normally, uh, without the, the greenhouse gases, uh, the average temperature of the Earth's surface would be around minus 18 degrees Celsius. So that's uh, not a very uh, nice temperature to live in, uh, but because of the greenhouse gases, the, the average temperature uh, of the Earth's surface is around 16 degrees uh, Celsius. But due to all the um, uh, pollution, it's heating up, and that's also what we see, of course, uh, with the climate change that's, uh, that's going on right now. So what does sign have to offer? Um, we have a, a turnkey solution, uh, which is the, the greenhouse uh, analyzer, and that's based on a 456 uh, GC. Um, and this um, includes a, a TCD and an FID detector, uh, which are in series, and there's a separate ECD detector installed. Um, we have a um, packed white bore on column injector, the PW carries with valves, and we uh, tune the analyzer to measure the methane, the CO2, and the nitrous oxide in air. The um, uh, ECD can also be optionally configured uh, for the analysis of uh, chlorofluorohydrocarbons uh, and or sulfur hexafluoride, and this system is also uh, configured, uh, fully tuned and tested uh, at our sign factory. And when the system is installed, um, the performance is also checked uh, by the sign here on, on site. And it comes uh, preloaded then with uh, all the analysis methods and the documentation, which is specific to the application. So um, when you get this installed in the lab uh, and it's been tested, you can start with the analysis right away. In this one, uh, you only see uh, the GC itself. Um, there are several options. Uh, you can either use a, a manual injection, but that's basically uh, not done. Uh, you can use headspace samplers. Um, we offer, uh, since a couple of months, uh, the HT3 and the Versa. Uh, so you have a, a closed system, uh, which you can use uh, together with the GC. Uh, another possibility is, uh, for example, also sampling with the air canisters, uh, 
uh, or uh, we build a solution uh, which suits your way of sampling if you have another one. Uh, there are numerous options, so you can always inform uh, what is possible or yeah, tell us what kind of sampling you uh, request and we see what we can do with that. If we look at the analytical parameters, um, there are uh, three columns installed in the GC. Um, there, uh, sorry, three types of columns. Um, column one is a HACEP N, and there are two of them installed. Uh, one is for the TCD FID combination, and the other one is for the ECD combination. And um, that gives a uh, uh, CO2, uh, methane, and the nitrous oxide. Then there are two other columns installed, uh, a Porapec QS and a HACEP D, and these two are doing the separation of the components of interest that need to be analyzed. Uh, as said before, we have a TCD FID in series that has a helium as a carrier, carrier and we have an ECD which uses uh, argon methane uh, as a carrier. The oven is kept at uh, 50 degrees isothermal for 10 minutes. Uh, the injector is at 100 degrees uh, and the detectors are either at 200 or 300 degrees. As said, uh, when the analyzer, uh, analyzer is being delivered, uh, it comes with uh, all the methods uh, installed already so you can run right away. If we look at the schematics um, of the greenhouse gas analyzer, you will see uh, in here you have the injector. And uh, after that, we have two sample loops of uh, 500 microliters. Uh, one of them uh, is connected to uh, the HACEP N column, which then is being forwarded to the PORPA QS column and finally connects to the TCD and the FID um, in series. The carbon dioxide uh, is being um, uh, analyzed by the TCD and then the methane goes on on the FID and where it's visible. The other one, uh, it's also the HACEP N column uh, and this one is for the nitrous oxide or um, if you want the sulfur hexafluoride and the CFC, the chlorofluorohydrocarbon. Um, I will run through what's going on uh, uh, during injection. So we'll start with uh, now what I call channel one. Uh, that's where the CO2 and the methane are being separated for the components. Um, as said, the TCD detects the CO2 and then the FID detects the methane. And the rear detector, which is the ECD, uh, that's where we have the nitrous oxide. Um, and we have a backflush in there uh, that's in um, the next one. So what we'll do is um, at first we flush the sample loops. Uh, we flush that with helium, uh, so we make sure there are no uh, oxides uh, or whatever left uh, in the sample loop. And it's completely uh, filled with the helium. Uh, the oxides can cause issues with uh, the columns. Um, so we make sure this is uh, at first uh, flushed correctly. Then uh, we start loading the... Um, um, sample, and this can be in, uh, in this case uh, an air, but if you use the sampler, uh, you can also um, configure it for uh, water, soil, or organic material which you can analyze um, based on the, yeah, whatever you, uh, your sample is. So the sample is loaded into the two sample loops, uh, it's being flushed, and Afterwards, uh, it starts injecting. So when it's being switched to the inject position, um, it will go on to uh, both your columns. And uh, um, after a certain amount of time, uh, we will switch uh, to back flush position. 
So the, both the pre-columns, the HACEP and uh, for uh, the TCD-FID combination, uh, as well as the ECD are being back flushed. And uh, all the components you do not want to have on your uh, second column uh, being flushed out for a certain amount of time. So we make sure we only have the components of interest uh, going on to your second detector, uh, uh, to your second column, and then onto your uh, detectors. Uh, if we look at the grammatograms that are coming out of the um, uh, TCD and FID, so the T TCD, uh, it will show your uh, CO2, uh, and we have a detection limit of uh, 1 ppm. And if we look at the second detector, the FID, uh, that's where we have the methane peak. And we have a detection limit of 0 0.1 ppm. So that's rather low. Uh, if we look at the, the ECD, uh, we have over here the nitrous oxide uh, with the 1 ppm. Uh, and in this case, uh, we also did an analysis uh, of the sulfur hexafluoride, and that's at uh, 1 ppb. So you see nice sharp peaks uh, for both, um, uh, so for all three uh, detectors. And we also ran some uh, repeatability data uh, on the greenhouse gas analyzer. And if you look at it, uh, we have a, a very good relative standard deviation. So it's a, um, the results that are coming out uh, uh, are uh, very acceptable. Uh, again, an overview of the repeatability data uh, in this graph, and it's well within uh, the 10% limits. Uh, for this, uh, we use our software, which is the Compass CDS. Um, and all the three channels, they are combined into one report. Um, so you don't have to look at all kind of different um, reports. Uh, it all comes out in one and you have your data uh, straight away. So this uh, um, greenhouse gas analyzer is um, based on the 456 GC and it's perfectly suited for the analysis uh, of the CO2, the methane, and the nitrous oxide in a single run. And this run it takes about 10 minutes, so uh, you can uh, run multiple analysis on one day if you have uh, a lot of samples to do. Uh, as said before, we have the ability to handle the different samples uh, like um, uh, water, soil, uh, and organic material, uh, if you want to do this, uh, you will need uh, an additional headspace uh, sampler, which we can provide. And if you look at the repeatability, uh, all the figures are uh, very good, uh, with an RSD typically uh, less than 2%. The application note uh, can be found on our website. Uh, it's application note AN0012. Uh, in there, you will see yeah, the same uh, as I just uh, discussed before uh, with the examples, uh, the repeatability data, and also uh, the conditions. Um, so you can have another look at this uh, and see if this is applicable for what for you need. And next to that, uh, at Scion, we also have uh, the Scion branded spares and consumables. We just released a, a guide, which is also available on our website. And in this, I've um, shown some examples of what we have to offer. Uh, we have like the ferrules, uh, liners, and the syringes, septa, um, files, uh, and we also have uh, design branded columns. And we are expanding uh, what we offer um, throughout the year. So uh, our consumables guide will be uh, offering more and more uh, within now in a couple of um, uh, months. Uh, next to that, uh, in this one, uh, we were showing the um, uh, 456 GC, or which is the GC with the larger footprint. Uh, we also have other um, products we offer, of course. Uh, we have the 436 GC. Uh, this is a smaller footprint, uh, which is this GC, uh, and uh, also have the um, uh, single quad MS, 
uh, which is in this case coupled to the 436, but can also be coupled to the 456 uh, GC. Uh, since last year, we also offer uh, FAPNA and information um, can also be found uh, on our website. Um, I was already talking a bit about the, the Compass uh, CDS, uh, which is used uh, with our GCs. Um, uh, it's a very uh, easy to handle software, uh, which can be used uh, for our own uh, products, uh, which we currently have the 436 and the 456 GCs, the LC6000, uh, of course, but also the legacy products uh, from Booker or Varian, the GCs. And um, we can also uh, connect to other instrument manufacturers um, uh, where you can use our Compass CDS um, um, to work with the, the other vendor uh, instruments. Uh, as said, on our website, um, I'm sorry, on our website, uh, you will find uh, all the extra information. And um, uh, if you need any additional one, you can contact us, uh, of course. Um, you can contact either via phone, email, uh, or send an inquiry directly via the website. Uh, and uh, either contact me directly um, uh, via my email. Um, it's a bit shorter than I expected, but uh, I'm... Uh, I will stop this presentation and we'll see if there are any questions uh, that came in because I'm not able to see uh, any questions in the chat while I'm presenting. So I will stop this one. So the, the only one that I wanted to clarify is argon methane is, is quite expensive to buy. Uh, could you use another carrier gas for that? Uh, you could use uh, nitrogen also for that. Uh, what I understand is that the argon methane um, is a bit better for the ease, but I understand it's uh, expensive. And I think also that a uh, question came in from Thomas La for this specific analyzer using argon methane mix for the ECD is mandatory or optional instead of nitrogen. You can also use the nitrogen. Uh, that's possible. Now, if there aren't any other questions, uh, thank you for your time. Um, and I hope I've given you a bit of um, a good overview of the of the analyzer. Uh, and if there's any additional info needed, uh, please contact us. Uh, again, thanks for attending and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>